Hi, I'm Kelly Hogan, and this is my Zero Carb Life, and this is my not-so-zero-carb husband. <laughs> Just point me out right at the front, why don't you? So we both have a list of questions that were sent in by viewers and group members, and I figure you pick a question, I'll pick a question, we'll kind of go back and forth. So what do you want to ask first? Well, first of all, we got a ton of questions from your ask me anything. And I guess if we did all of them, this would be we won't like four hours long. We won't do all of them. Um, but let's start with a question from uh, Julianne. So okay. Julianne asks or says, she says, I've been eating a carnivore diet since December 2023. Good job, Julianne. Yeah. Why am I so tired all of the time? All right. So she is. First of all, yes. you have three kids, Julianne. Oh, if so, that, that's it. That's why. Exhausting. <laughs> um, so she's a few months into carnivore. It can definitely take a few months to just adapt. You're switching fuel sources. She was glucose fueled, carb fueled. And now she needs to be fat fueled. Protein is really not a good energy source. So it's possible that she is just not eating enough fat in her diet. It's possible that, and I would recommend that everybody get at least 60 to 80% of their calories from fat. You may not know how to figure that out. I don't. I'm an okay. English major, so <laughs> okay, that's kind of hard. Well, it's really not that complicated. A tracking app makes that really easy to figure out. So if she's relying on protein as an energy source, that will make you feel exhausted. And so increasing fat to see if that helps. It could be electrolytes. You know, I don't take electrolytes, but we get our electrolytes from our food, sodium, potassium, and magnesium are the primary electrolytes that we look at when somebody is exhausted. And when we first get into ketosis, magnesium tends to drop really low. But also a carnivore diet is not very high in potassium. So very often it is one of the two because most people are getting sodium, of course, from their salt. Most of us are salting our food, but where are you going to get potassium from? Bananas. No, not no. bananas. Not bananas. Not bananas. So pork does have potassium, but I don't know if she's eating pork. Beef has some potassium, but here's my encouragement on electrolytes. If she's already taking electrolytes, that's probably not it. If she's not taking any electrolytes at all, she may want to slowly try taking half a packet per day, increase to a whole packet. If the electrolyte she's taking, like let's say she's taking Element, Element T is a very popular brand. If she's taking those, they are very high in magnesium and very low in potassium. So try a different brand like snake juice powder. And it could also be that she's just not eating enough overall, under eating, other primary cause. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next question. And Do you want me to ask it? Or do you want me okay, to answer? ask the one from Debbie, unless you know the answer to Debbie's question. I don't, I don't know. All right. De so Debbie asks, where do I find the adrenal massage? I did it with you during your class. Now I cannot find it. Please help. Um, I. Do you know where it is? I. Where is the adrenal massage? All right. I, I'm dying to find out. Like this. Okay. Do you do this in the bathroom by yourself? or No, it involves rubbing your groin. It actually does. And we do it in class. And I tell them, I want you to just, if anybody asks you, how did carnivore class go? Just smile real big and say, great, I rubbed my groin with Kelly Hogan today. And that's what we do. Except it's actually not an adrenal massage. What <laughs> I think Debbie was asking about is a lymphatic massage. Um. <laughs> Debbie, if you were in the class, you're asking, where can you find it now? I have linked to it in the emails. You can rub your groin and think of me as much as you'd like. Okay. It's also in, if you're a recent group member, it is in our handbook under chapter one, lymphatic massage, the six spots, the collarbone in front and behind the ears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then spot number three involves the pectoral muscle and the armpit area. Spot number four is the groin, but it's just the area Don't where- you're supposed to do that the, on YouTube. This it's is just the air. there it is, <laughs> where your legs connect to your body and then behind your knees. And there you go. Hopefully that'll jog your memory, Debbie. All right, what's next? I hope we cut that one out. 
<laughs> oh, we won't. Okay, so also Debbie, uh, not the same Debbie, okay. different Debbie. I see that. This Debbie does not have her mind in the gutter. Uh, she writes, I started Carnivore February 1st of 2024, so just a few weeks ago. Yeah, and she submitted this question the first week of March, I see. So she had been Carnivore about one month when she submitted this. Right. She says, I've been binge watching you and Dr. Ken Berry and others nice. lost 22 pounds in February. But she's in a stall uh, now for almost two weeks, just back and forth. Okay. Well, technically, she is not in a stall because in the weight loss community, they say you have to have not lost anything or just been bouncing in ounces, right, for six weeks or more. She has lost 22 pounds in the month of February, which, even though it was leap year, that's that is shortest that. month of the year, 22 pounds. Also... The end of her question. I, I did not read no the end of the longer, question. I'm sorry. She's no longer having to take her insulin. And she's a type 2 diabetic. Advice on how to start losing again. So to me, Debbie, it sounds like you are knocking it out of the park. When you lose really quickly, and 22 pounds in the month of February is really quickly, you can just mark it on your wall. There will be plateaus. There will be stalls. You might even gain for a little while because your body realizes, oh gosh, we're shrinking. And... It's a normal, it's normal. I went through it. I would lose and we call it a whoosh. You have a whoosh. You have a whoosh. And it does feels. whoosh happen after the adrenal gland massage? You know what it sometimes does, except it's a lymphatic massage. <laughs> yes. Um, and you expect that to just keep going and going. It, it doesn't. So as long as you are, Debbie, as long as you are doing the things, you're avoiding the foods that are going to spike your glucose, which in turn will keep your insulin coming down. You're eating foods to nourish your body. Getting How can you get more weight loss? Movement helps. Dealing with stress and good sleep. Those are the primary things she can focus on. But to me, it sounds like so she, she's doing a great job. Your body goes, I'm shrinking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm shrinking. And it does, honestly, your body is here to survive. It doesn't really want, to, yes. It doesn't want to just shrink, shrink, shrink. So it there goes through a period of stabilizing. Bring the Oreo cookies. I'm shrinking. Well, that does make me think of something else to tell Debbie. Debbie, if you are severely under eating, and if that is part of how you lost 22 pounds in a month, then your oh, body yeah. might be like, okay, we're shrinking too quickly. Slow down the metabolism. But. Just make sure you're eating enough. And as uh, Dr. Barry says, take a good dose of vitamin P. It's patience. That's right. Okay. But good for you, Debbie. Yes. Uh, Cindy says she's eating primarily eggs and bacon, but okay. she's not losing anything right now. She started off okay. Mm -hmm. Two eggs, two strips of bacon, normal meal. Am I eating enough? And for... For purposes to describe, I'm 5'2 and 176 pounds. Okay. I, I looked ahead at this question and I went ahead and entered a 5'2 person, 176 pounds female, into what we call a TDEE, a total daily energy expenditure, which estimates how many calories a person needs per day. For her size, and I just guessed at activity level, I put her in at very lightly active, like you're taking right. walks. That's it. She should be getting 1,500 to 1,600 calories to lose weight. That would put her at a 10 to 20% caloric deficit. So she says she is eating two eggs and two strips of bacon at a meal. Well, I did the math. That is 369 calories. And listen, uh, this Her is meal. Cindy. Cindy, I gave you every benefit of the doubt. I put in large eggs cooked in a full tablespoon of butter with two thick slices of bacon. Sounds pretty good. It does. But that's 369 calories. Multiply that by three. If she's, in fact, eating three times a day, and that is 1,107 calories, are you eating enough? I would say no. And I would say, unless you're a toddler, but you would be a pretty tall toddler yeah. at five foot two. So I would encourage you to very slowly... Cindy, if you do this overnight, you are almost certainly going to gain weight. So don't go from 1,100 to 1,600. That's a quick jump, and your body won't know what to do with all that. But I would very slowly, what we call, reverse diet. 
incrementally go up about 100 calories per day and stay there for several days. So it's more like an extra egg? An extra egg to an extra tablespoon of butter. That's okay. it. Yeah. And it likely won't make you feel stuffed. It'll just be slow enough that you're going to sneak it by your body, get your metabolism revved up, and you'll be able to eat more and hopefully start losing again. That's pretty cool. You just throw an extra egg in there once, then twice. That's right. Yeah. Cool stuff. Uh, Colleen mm -hmm. sent in this question. She says, I'm getting lab work done. How many days before the lab test should I stop drinking coffee? I know you have explained that it can affect your results. Yeah. Yes, it can make you incredibly hard to get along with. Yes. And grumpy. And, <laughs> and drinking the coffee before lab work is just going to bring you joy. That's right. So That's it depends how many days you want to have a joyless existence. <laughs> All right. So seriously, I know you did this yes, once. You I have done drinking, many, not yeah, just once. Where you stopped drinking coffee. I've experimented with this where I drank coffee right up until the test, which is what my doctor always said you can do. As long as it's black coffee, you're fine to have it the day of the test. That is not true. And there's a lot of research about that. They really need to get it together on this. Um, I also experimented with stopping coffee one day before, three days before, 16 days before. That was a really long 16 days for all of us. Uh, the thing that it affects the most, this coffee, is how your triglycerides appear on lab, lab work. I don't personally think coffee is actually damaging your hearts, but I do know for sure some people are what we call hyper responders to coffee. And what's interesting is it's not just the caffeine, it is the coffee bean itself so even decaf can do it. Um, but I would recommend at least minimum 24 hours. A long time or a lot of times, like they'll look at the triglycerides. And if you have the elevated triglycerides plus the elevated cholesterol, that's when they go, ah, you've got to have a statin. Yes. Elevated triglycerides are a sign of one thing. Elevated or possibly two. <laughs> no, it's a sign that you've had carbohydrates. Uh, okay. The only other way to have high triglycerides is if you are a hyper responder to coffee. So when a carnivore tells me, and I've tested this so many times, they say my triglycerides have gone up without carbs. They say, yes, I said, do you, did you drink coffee right beforehand? And yeah, they yeah. did. Give it at least 24 hours. I'll tell you three days works like a charm and it made no difference. 16 days versus three. So no need to fool around with the 16 days. I tried it out for you. <laughs> okay, don't make your husband suffer as well. Kelly. Yes. No. Another person named Kelly. Oh, I see. Kelly P. All right. Kelly writes, I'm having aversions to meat and eggs. Mm -hmm. I've been carnivore for a little over a month. It's making it hard to get my calories in. I did fine on keto. Would you suggest going back to keto? Just the smell of meat is making me nauseous. Well, she's just wrong because meat smells great. <laughs> this is called meat aversions, Kelly. Uh, I know that a lot of people in the carnivore space will say, if you don't want meat, you're not hungry. And I have said that as well. And for the most part, I think that's true. If if our children were to say, I'm hungry, and we say, do you want bacon? No. Do you want eggs? No. Burger patties? No. You're not hungry. You're bored. Go do something else. But that's not true with a meat aversion. A meat aversion is when you're actually ravenous. But the idea, the thought, the smell, the sight of meat... Oh, makes you want to punch somebody in the nose. Do you know when I had meat aversions? It was not when I was a new carnivore. I didn't go through this. And if I hadn't experienced it myself, I would probably think that Kelly P is just nuts. Any guesses? Oh, if I could only venture a few guesses, but go ahead. When I was pregnant, all three times. I could not eat steak. Do you remember how there were some steaks in the fridge that I actually let spoil because I could not even conceive of eat conceive. Huh? I did conceive, <laughs> but I couldn't eat red meat. And so I ended up eating a lot of burger patties covered in cheese and hot sauce, a lot of sausage and eggs, so much hot sauce. Um, I but, remember also though you said technically you were you were just doing air drying with the steaks. Oh, uh, so right before I got pregnant with Julia, so, I was air drying steaks. It's like 
Howdy, this one's been air drying for about five months. Yep, and then once the meta version set in, they they sat there till they spoiled. I couldn't at, eat them. At that point, it was the mold version that got me. So <laughs> yes. Was, uh, so my suggestion for uh, Kelly P is a uh, couple ways you can deal with this. Some people say, well, then I'm just going to fast until food, real food, meat sounds good again, and it will because your body will eventually be like wow, I have to get nutrition. You won't starve to death. Your body will kick in. It usually takes four to seven days. That's a long fast. And if you're a new carnivore and you go to the break room and there are cookies, that's the thing about the fasting as a new carnivore. Yeah. You're still having cravings and now you're hungry. I don't think it's the best idea. Or you can baby yourself through it like I did through all three first trimesters. Find an animal product that is doable. Like... If you can handle cheesy sausage omelets, do that three times a day. Okay. And it will pass unless you give in to this little temper tantrum that your body is throwing and you eat the sugar and the carbs. When when they do that, it kind of resets it all again. It's like a toddler that pitched the fit and got his way. So you're kind of going into this next question a little bit from Lizzie. And okay. that is... When you first started carnivore, did you just change to it overnight or did you make that transition gradually over time? It was pretty overnight. So one day I was eating all of the carbs. This was way back in 2004. I was eating standard American diet. We were going out for Italian and Applebee's every single night. We were just eating It carbs. was not great. It, I mean, it was great socially it was great taste wise it was not great for our health or the budget frankly we were going out to eat every single day <laughs> but then the, my doctor says i want you to cut out carbs so i did keep in pickles green beans some salads but that was it that was really it that was it and jello <laughs> jello and diet soda for five years, that's what I did. And that transition from standard American to almost carnivore was in one day. I did not experience what they call oxalate dumping that some people go through. Have you ever heard of oxalate dumping? I thought that that was like something from the 90s that Greenpeace was protesting, but go ahead. <laughs> well, they should have been. Because it's... Save the whales from the oxalates. It's not good. Just ask Dr. Sally Norton if you want to know more about oxalate dumping. Sally Norton. I did not experience it, though, but I was not eating a lot of plants. I was not on a very plant-based diet right before starting this. Um, but some people do like to drop their carbs more gradually. Others do it overnight. There is no wrong answer here. And some people just take the cake, put it in the trash can, and dump dish soap on it. I did that. That's what I did. Yep. No warning at all. Just suddenly, all cake must be destroyed with dish soap. Paul Mollive. That was me. Yeah. And and it wasn't that gradual. That happened pretty quickly. <laughs> Very sudden. I, oh, I didn't know what to think, to be honest. I just came home, and there was a whole birthday cake that was homemade. It was a really nice cake, and it was just covered in, in lemon lime dish soap. So one day, I would have eaten the cake. The next day, I destroyed the cake. That's how. That's how sudden it was. I was down in the den and I hear, Satan, get thee behind me. Basically. That was it. Yeah. All right. Um, we are, we're going to keep this one short. Give me one more. Okay. Well, I, <laughs> you don't know this, but Kelly's actually on a treadmill right now. She's walking. I feel like you've been walking a lot here. I am. Yeah. If, if like, yeah. all we need is a Fleetwood Mac song and for you to have a beard and this would be Forrest Gump. I mean, like you would be going across the United States. Um, if only we could power the house with my treadmill. Oh, I'll work on that. Actually, we could save hundreds of dollars. A month. Yes. Okay. So 30,000 steps. You're doing 30,000 steps. Very often. That's right. A day. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and Karen has asked, did you see a large weight loss after you started averaging 30 thousand steps a day uh, i did lose weight so as you know i've been at approximately this weight for m many years other than having babies but this past july i started walking a lot more it really started i think in june but i, I upped my game and i've since gotten a walking pad 
So it started with trips to the meadow. The kids would say, oh, can I take a walk with you by myself to the meadow? Yes. And it's 1.75 miles. This is where the gateway drug is. <laughs> yes. Then the next kid, can I take a walk with you to the meadow? Yes. Then you would come home. We would eat dinner. James and I would walk to the meadow. Yes. The neighbors began to wonder what was happening. So much walking. <laughs> but then we got the treadmill and I can set my laptop right in front of it and I can edit video. I write notes. I listen to podcasts. I get a lot of work done. So if I'm working for six hours straight, guess what? I'm walking for six hours straight. And people have asked, how do you find the time to walk that much? And what I don't ask is this rude question. How do you find the time to sit that much? Is that me? Okay, so <laughs> it's a lot of walking. Did I lose weight? Actually, yes. Since July, I have lost. So I looked back um, in honor of this question. And in July, I was 148 pounds. As of today, I'm 126, and that's 22 pounds. So that's how I'm getting steps in. They aren't fast. I'm not breaking a sweat. It's easy for me. I'm not implying that everybody should get 30,000 steps. It's actually highly unnecessary unless you just really enjoy walking and don't like sitting on your butt all day. Well, on that note, I think I'm going to go have an adrenal massage. Lymphatic massage. You need help? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for sending in the questions. We'll do it again sometime. Thank you for coming on and sharing my zero carb life. Also, James is the one that bought me the sign. I love my sign. It looks good up there. It does. It does. Okay. See y'all next time. Bye.